Math does not prepare you for the real world. This is something that people always say. I hear it so much. I used to see this little thing pop up on Facebook. It was a picture of an older gentleman, and he was sitting back in some rocking chair, and it said something like, why teach algebra when you can teach finance and real life skills? And the guy was older and he was a little bit overweight. And I guess that was like trying to indicate that he has some special knowledge because he's older that other people don't have. I hear it all the time. Math does not prepare you for the real world. Instead of teaching math, you should teach real world skills, teach job skills. So let me say this. What is the real world? What is it? If you get a math degree and you get a job, say, as a middle school teacher or a high school teacher, that's your world. That's what you do. If you get a math degree and you get a job working at a bank, that's what you do. That's your real world. So people saying that math doesn't teach real world skills, I think the argument is completely flawed because what is the real world? The real world is how you define it and how you live your life and what you do with your life. There's plenty of people that have gotten math degrees and have been wildly successful. I always think of one person in particular, the guy who invented Magic the Gathering, which is a game I used to play, and his name was Richard Garfield, and he has a math PhD. And he invented probably the most popular trading card game in the history of the world, Magic the Gathering. Then there's the billionaire James Simmons, who was a hedge fund manager. I mean, I'm not sure if he still is, but he left academia and started his own hedge fund. So there's lots of people who study math that do great things. And there's lots of people who study math that live their lives and they function in the real world. So I think that the argument that math doesn't help prepare you for the real world is completely flawed. Doing math teaches you math. But it also teaches you other skills that I think you can apply to other areas in your life. And I, w I don't want to use the word real world because everyone's world is very different, right? There are some people that have jobs as computer programmers. There are people that teach math. There are people that work at banks. There are people that work at restaurants. There's people that drive trucks for a living. I mean, there's all kinds of things that people do for a living and that they do for fun. So I really think that the real world terminology is wrong. So what does math actually teach you? In my mind, math teaches you how to think. It teaches you how to solve problems and it helps you organize your thoughts. No matter what you end up doing in your life, if you study mathematics, it's going to help your thinking. You'll be able to think a little bit more clearly. When you have a complex problem you have to solve, whether it be moving into a new apartment, um, getting married, uh, filling out a job application, deciding which car to buy. These are all big life decisions. And I think by studying math, it teaches you those thinking skills. And that really helps you. People always say that math should be taught through understanding. It's better to teach someone how to solve a problem by understanding it. For example, in Calculus 3, there's these problems where you have to find the equation of a plane, and you're usually given different pieces of information. Those types of problems really can't be taught with a step-by-step -step method. Instead, you have to actually understand the problem and then use your understanding of the process to create your own steps in your mind and solve the problem. And that's, I think, what math teaches you. When you're encountered with the problem in life, I don't wanna use the word real world, but in life, you can apply those critical thinking skills, as they call them, and use it to solve problems in your daily life. I think the biggest flaw, and this is the number one flaw, and the argument that people should teach other things instead of math, is that it excludes math. There is nothing wrong with saying, hey, we should start teaching personal finance in schools. Hey, we should start teaching home economics in schools. Hey, we should start teaching people how to fix their cars in schools. I think these are all great skills. But to take those subjects and to throw out math and teach them instead is just terrible. I mean, it's a terrible idea. I think those subjects can be thrown in and mathematics should be preserved. 
Because again, math teaches you how to think. I can't think of any subject out there that is comparable, except maybe physics, but physics uses a lot of math. So next time you see those things on the internet that say, hey, you know, they should teach this instead of teaching algebra. No, 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 no. Use your mind, right? Think. There is no instead. Maybe those things should be taught. I think that's a pretty good argument. I think those are skills that should be taught. They should teach a little bit of personal finance in schools. They should teach, you know, how to cook, how to fix your car, you know, just basic life skills. Those things should be taught. But to throw out perhaps one of, if not the deepest, richest subject on earth, the subject that really gets you to think and really expands your mind in place of these other things that really aren't as difficult. I think it's just really bad. In any case, math is still taught in schools. At least in the US, if you go for any four-year degree at an accredited institution, typically they'll require that you take some mathematics. For example, if you wanted to get a computer science degree, most schools require that you take calculus one, calculus two, some discrete mathematics, and maybe one or two more electives, some schools might require like linear algebra or give you an option of taking another elective, which in my opinion, something like combinatorics and graph theory would be a good complement for that major. If you do engineering, you're required to take Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, some differential equations, and then you do a lot more physics. So you do see math. Even if you're a nursing major, if you decide to become a nurse, they usually do require some algebra, usually college algebra and some statistics. So math is still required for you know most degrees. And there are programs that you can take where you learn certain trade skills and job skills. They call them job skills because these are degrees that you get or programs that you go through that are specifically designed to help you get a job. Where in my view, when you get a bachelor's degree, you come out of you know, your institution with your degree and you're considered educated. So what does that mean? That means that you've learned a lot of things. You've expanded your mind. You've studied history. You've studied English. You know how to write a letter. You know how to write an email. You know how to communicate. You know some mathematics. You know how to use a computer and you have a variety of skills which you can apply in your daily life. I mean, that's the whole point of an education is to become educated. The way math has been taught has changed over the years. If you look at the older books from the 60s or older, you'll notice that they're written in a very, very different way from the way that books are written today. Even algebra books from the past, they're written differently. I think there are some things today that are better in the newer books, and there are some things that are worse, and it really varies by book. But there's definitely been a shift in mathematics, and I think that that shift has been caused because nowadays um, there seems to be more of an emphasis on going to college than there was perhaps maybe in the 60s. I don't know. I wasn't alive in the 60s. I don't know. But that's my, that's my feeling. That's what I get from reading the books because I feel like the books are definitely a lot easier today than they were in the 60s and 50s and 40s. They were definitely written in a more rigorous fashion. And that's good and it's bad. You know, on one hand... Uh, you want math to be easy so you can learn it, right? Easier books are better. On the other hand, you want books that are very well written and teach you some deeper things about mathematics. What's going to happen in 20 years? Where's math going to be? Are they still going to require it for a degree? Do you think that calculus will still be required for a computer science degree? What do you think? Do you think they should teach these other subjects instead of math? Do you see math being taught in schools the same way it's being taught today, 20 years from now? It's hard to say what the world is going to be like in 20 years, but hopefully we still have mathematics. Go do some math and good luck.